One of the most commonly asked questions in all of portrait painting is, what colors do I use to mix to get skin tones? The answer may not be as simple as it seems, but we will explore all of the key concepts. Welcome to how to use color. And if at any point in this demonstration you become curious as to what materials I'm using, please check out the description box of this video for a complete list of the materials that I use. So for the first mixture of color, we're going to use a drawing color. So we're using ultramarine blue, mixing it with burnt sienna. Now normally I just use raw umber to draw, but this time I decided to take raw umber out. Pretty much all of the earth colors have been taken out of the palette and we have a much more prismatic palette. And don't worry, I'll be explaining the colors that I use as we go in a kind of step-by-step -step fashion. You're actually going to see much more footage from the palette than you usually do in most of the painting videos that I've been uploading in this style. Which, by the way, if you are interested in uh, checking out the photo reference used for this painting demonstration, please see the description box down below. There is a link to a copyright free uh, source where you can uh, look at the same photo reference that I used and you can create your own drawing or your own painting from it as well. So take note that the ultramarine blue mixed with the burnt sienna creates a nice neutral brown color. The more ultramarine blue, the cooler it becomes, the more burnt sienna, the warmer it is. So as you see that the drawing Though I'm not explaining too much of the drawing, the color mixture used for this drawing has been chosen so that I will be able to draw with color over top of this. Now the most important thing when it comes to the drawing is the big basic shapes. The most simplest of elements are the most important elements in the beginning of any portrait drawing. Notice I'm not going to differentiate painting and drawing, they are the same thing especially in this stage. If you are thinking about differentiating the two, don't waste your time. If you are confused about it, just think of painting as drawing with color. That's all it is. So now we are mixing a bright red color, which is orange molybdate, a rublev color. For all intents and purposes, it's just a bright orangey red. Mixed across the color spectrum with viridian. So what happens when you mix a reddish color with a greenish color. They neutralize one another and you're left with a nice and rich neutral. So now we're mixing in lead white along with more bluish tones and then of course going across the color wheel we have more of the yellows. Now if you look at the way the palette is set up, it's set up from yellows to orange to red to brown to green, blue, and then purple. So mixing these colors across the color wheel, remember if you're trying to go for the complement of a color like red to green, you get a nice neutral. If you go from say orange to purple, orange to purplish, you get another nice complement, a complementary color. The end result is a nice and usable skin tone. Mixing up a healthy combination of these colors we're using a size 2 filbert bristle brush. And no, the video has not been sped up. I kind of just move the brush that quickly whenever I'm uh, mixing color. I should differentiate that this approach of mixing color is more impressionist in nature. Meaning that as you're seeing a close-up of the palette, like I said, you're going to see a lot of palette footage. So if you've been wanting to see mixtures of colors, this is definitely the video for you. So uh, again, now we're mixing up our primary yellow. We were mixing that with white. See how it's kind of mixing from one puddle onto another puddle? As I was saying before, this is more of an impressionist style of mixing color, of preparing color on the palette. Remember the palette is a tool where the artist can uh, express their uh, their color combinations and their color organizations on. So working with color when you mix as you go, I refer to this as mix and go, and more impressionist style allows you to change hues 
across basically any part of the palette that you want. When you pre-mix your colors, as I did before in many other paintings, when you pre-mix colors, you set it up in a systematic way that is not as, um, let's say, it's, it's not as easy to change color relationships from one shape to another if you're working with pre-mixtures. This, on the other hand, allows you to change directions quite rapidly and allow yourself to have even more changes across the uh, color wheel. The only downside to mix and go is that sometimes it can get a little chaotic and a little bit unorganized if you have trouble working with values. If you struggle working with values, then using a pre-mixed system of colors will help you, but remember that will also restrict you when it comes to uh, getting a variety of different colors. So now I'm using Cadmium Yellow Pale, Viridian, mixed it right into that burnt sienna uh, drawing color, burnt sienna ultramarine fruit, uh, blue drawing color, excuse me. And now I've neutralized that orangey color with dioxazine purple. So going across the color wheel again from the oranges to the purple is giving us a nice neutral, a warmish neutral that leans somewhat towards a kind of copper bronzish color as we are painting in these shapes. How to use color is a very, you know, a, a very uh, big question to ask. So what you're looking at is different color relationships. So the relationship means what is the color of the light in relation to the color of the shadow. And can you push the difference between the color of the light and the color of the shadow in order to enhance the light effect, the visual effects? So the shadow, as you've seen here, leans towards a more coolish uh, note. The light is also cool, but it's a warmish cool, as you saw there. And now we're mixing right into the other wet mixtures on the palette. Ideally, you want to have a larger palette than this when you have that many colors, but if you mix right into your previous puddles, it's not that big of a, a concern. But it is a little bit better if you do have a larger palette, uh, just truth be told. Now, going from that pinkish kind of a coppery color, which was a mixture, by the way, of red neutralized with greenish tones, right across from it, the plane changes and so does the color. So it went towards a more yellow, cool, uh, vibrant color. Some colors that went into that are definitely lead tin yellow, which is a kind of uh, not so bright, but coolish light yellow mixed with cadmium yellow pale into the highlight region. And now we're going in with cadmium red deep, mixing right into it with that was lead tin yellow. Going across again the color wheel, we went right into dioxazine purple and then back into cadmium red and then back into lead tin yellow. And a little bit of alizarin permanent goes into that mixture as well. You can use alizarin crimson or alizarin permanent, whichever you want. Uh, just know that alizarin crimson historically uh, tends to be a fugitive color, but for all intents and purposes, it's essentially going to be the same thing. Uh, so whether you use alizarin permanent or crimson, there are differences between the two, but the differences are kind of very small. So now more alizarin uh, permanent, and we're mixing across with cerulean blue, and now cobalt blue gives us a nice red towards the violet color, as you're seeing here. The darker plane is not just a value change anymore, but it is a value change and a color change. So every plane change is going to be a color change. Not always a value change, sometimes you can incorporate color changes within the same plane. Now we're mixing a little bit more of the flake white, nice and thick mixture, cadmium yellow pale, cerulean blue, mixing right into the old skin tones, so it has the effect of the older skin tones, but it's kind of a coolish metallic color. These are colors that you could not get with a limited palette. 
and more lead white. Now as I say that, using an extensive palette like the one that I'm using, or using any kind of palette with multiple colors, is unnecessary when it comes to creating the effects of skin tone. If you want to have the most basic uh, color mixing palette, go for the Zorn palette. For most color situations, it's all you need. But if you're trying to push your color beyond that of just, uh, you know, classical portraiture, if you're trying to push your color towards more impressionism and beyond, then you're going to want to use a more extensive palette. So now we have a greenish gray that leans towards the blue. So a little bit of cerulean blue now goes into the mix. Every plane change is a color change. Sometimes it is a value change. In this case, it's definitely a value change. Now remember that purplish color on the lip is being contrasted now by that bluish color underneath of the lower lip. It's pretty fun to be able to push these color relationships. Now it's important to mention that the lighting in the photograph used for this photo reference was taken under, at least presumably, was taken under natural light. So there's a lot of nice cool neutrals that would come into play. Now when you're working from photo references, it's going to be 10 to 15 or whatever times more difficult to paint with uh, vivid color than working from light. So I only, I only recommend that you paint from photo references if you have experience painting from light. And in fact, in my online classes, I have many projects that do involve painting from life, which involve uh, self-portraits. And now we're adding a dark, almost lavenderish type color underneath of the wing of the nose. Remember, every plane change in the light will indicate a value change. Now, the condition of the light, the nature of the light, is best described with color. So every plane change must also be a color change. Now a little bit more alizarin and crimson goes into this mix. And phthalo turquoise, a very strong color. Phthalo turquoise and alizarin, sorry, alizarin crimson permanent. And viridian. Please note that I do use alizarin crimson and alizarin crimson permanent uh, interchangeably. They are about the same thing to me. So now I have added a little bit of viridian into this, and it's a really nice neutral gray that leans towards the bluish. And what we're doing is we're setting up the shadow planes for the hair, the color of the hair to be painted on. Now let's just go ahead and mix the color of the hair. So we're using cadmium yellow pale, viridian, a little more cadmium yellow pale, mixing right into another mixture. So remember you have opaque colors and transparent colors. Viridian is transparent, cadmium yellow pale being a cadmium is opaque. Diluting it a little bit with Gamsol. Be careful not to over dilute your paint, of course. Now we're just going to go and draw. Now, it, I should have mentioned what I'm painting on. It is an 8 by 10 inch uh, wooden panel that has several layers of oil paint underneath. So now we're mixing a lizard in permanent into a previous mixture of color. and viridian and the transparent color that's a transparent orange uh, also known as orange ochre it is a rublev color from natural pigments so it's kind of orangish an orange blue notice though that there aren't that many bright colors visible in the mixing space of the palette so when you actually mix on top of an older mixture of color, you can neutralize your colors a little bit more easily that way. Notice that there, there's no bright blues or bright greens or overly bright yellows in the skin tones. You have to be very careful not to oversaturate 
with colors when you are painting skin tones in portraiture. Now a little bit more phthalo turquoise. If you don't have it, definitely get it. It's a really nice color to experiment with. Phthalo turquoise, and now we're going with orange molybdate. Notice how they went straight brown. A really nice rich brown color. Diluting it with a little bit of Yamsol. Let's go ahead and see what happens with this. And it creates a nice copper, a dark copper type effect. So it is important to mention that these are neutrals. I'm painting a lot of neutral colors, but they are chromatic neutrals. Not so much just kind of grays and browns, but these are grays and browns that are chromatic. They are mixed in with bright colors, uh, modern colors. Now we've used a little bit of chrome yellow, which I have forgot to mention. Chrome yellow on the palette and a little bit of yellow ochre. Indian yellow. Indian yellow is a transparent, very high tinting color. So if you want to make a color that's yellow without raising the value too much, as most yellow colors are opaque, having a transparent, high tinting yellow like Indian yellow really helps to create a nice, rich, uh, yellowish color. So this is a yellow that leans towards the greenish. And the use of transparent colors, that is the transparent yellow, with those deep greens is a really nice combination to use when you're trying to get a kind of... Uh, almost, I keep saying the word copper, but um, almost goldish type color for the, um, for the color of the hair. Now these are a lot of color combinations. I don't expect you to memorize all of these color combinations that I'm throwing at you, but rather the methodology behind these color mixtures and kind of how how freely you're able to move across the color wheel and create these different effects. Never forget that the important part, uh, the most important concept is color relationship when it comes to these colors. You must relate one shape of a color in relation to its surrounding shapes. There's no such thing as an ugly color. The only problem is a color that is not related to the surrounding colors. And now we're starting to paint in the dark. It's kind of a dark with a bluish undertone that we've used for the glasses. And now we're mixing the highlight of the glasses, which is going to be phthalo turquoise and lead tin yellow mixed into a previous puddle there. Cobalt blue. So a nice bright blue that's light in value with greenish undertones. So a little bit of chrome yellow mixed in with the lead tin yellow. Chrome yellow is a bright lead yellow. Lead tin yellow, of course, also has lead in it. And of course, lead white has lead in it. Orange molybdate has lead in it. So a lot of these materials have lead in it. And you can, as long as you're allowed to, you can paint with lead-based colors. It has a very nice and heavy body to it. Now we're mixing a more bluish color. Phthalo turquoise, again, with less of the yellows, gives us a much more bluish tone. Let's add to it a little bit of cerulean blue. As I was saying, you can paint with lead-based paints, and typically there's more of a heavy body to it, especially if you use lead white. Uh, that's the only white that I really like to use these days for portraiture. Um, and I always say paint with it, don't mess with it. So wear gloves whenever you're cleaning the palette. Wear gloves when you're opening the paint tube. And just don't get the paint all up in your hands. And if you can prevent yourself from eating the paint and getting it all over yourself, then you're going to be good to go. The lead is not just going to jump out of the paint and harm you. Just paint with it. Don't mess with it. So another color relationship to mention is the kind of greenish highlight for the frame of the glasses contrasting the bluish highlight. And having said all of that, now the last thing to do is to drop a signature onto this portrait sketch.
and that should be about it. I really hope that you enjoyed this week's portrait painting demonstration, and if you found that you did, and you would like to take your education with me further, please check out my online classes on patreon.com slash artist. I wish you the very best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one. And if you are interested in purchasing this oil painting, a link to where you can purchase this oil painting will be listed in the description box of this video. It is currently on my Etsy page. There you can see the, um, the price of it. And of course there's only one available because there's only one painting available. And it will be available for sale for a short amount of time as I'm kind of fond of this painting. So I may not want to let it go that easily. So if you are interested in this, there is a link in the description box down below along with a couple other of my paintings that are available for purchase. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.